Good evening, everybody. So why are we talking about IPD, this innovative integrated project delivery method? Well, it comes down to the notion that the, the construction industry, as we know it, is broken. It's inefficient. I think some of you have probably seen these figures before, so I'm going to run through them really quickly. 38% of carbon emissions are from buildings. This is one of the biggest issues in the world today, Copenhagen notwithstanding. People are still thinking about it. It is a very big issue. So our buildings are emitting carbon dioxide. 30% of projects don't make schedule or budget. One third of groups can't figure out how to plan. 92% of project owners, just about every project owner out there, believes that architect's drawings aren't sufficient for construction. 37% of everything that comes onto a project site is wasted. One third of the things that are used in construction are thrown away. 72% of the energy used in the United States is used by buildings. Unlike almost any industry in our economy, the construction industry has gotten less productive over the last half century, rather than more productive. Notwithstanding the amazing technology that's out there in, in terms of building information modeling, notwithstanding all the innovations that are done in, in project delivery, it, it's getting less and less productive. And what are the sources of these inefficiencies? The division between the design and the construction industries. So the, I mean, think about any project that you've been on. How many RFIs have you had to deal with? This lack of communication between the contractors and the architects, or the difficult, maybe not lack, but difficulty of communication between the two. It's non-productive work. The idea that there's redundancy, the idea that architects' drawings have to be redrawn by the contractors, going back to the earlier slide, because they don't work for what the contractors are doing. Or thinking about cost plus contracts, where contractors are paid not necessarily to be efficient, but to do as much work as they can do because they're paid for their costs plus time, time and materials plus their, their fee. So they're not paid to be efficient necessarily. $15.8 billion in interoperability loss. Again, the idea that systems aren't meshing, that the architect may design in a, in a program, in an Autodesk program, but the contractor may not be using that program. And so the time that it takes to mesh these two, these two groups is a loss in the project. So what's the solution? In our experience, in a lot of instances, integrated project delivery is the solution. And why is it a solution? There's cost. There are efficiencies in design and construction. And we're going to talk a lot more about what IPD is. But generally speaking, the idea is that you have the owner, the architect, and the contractor coming together. And when you have the three parties coming together very early on, there are efficiencies in design. You have, the, you have a discussion, an interaction between the parties. The contingencies in the project are for the project, not for the the various team members of the project. And another thing that we'll talk about later is that there's an agreement not to sue. So the risk premium that you would have, that you would place on top of your fee or your estimate, is no longer there. Speed. IPD is generally fast track. So we talked about the, uh, the, wa the Autodesk projects. Both of those were done in about 10 months from beginning of negotiation of, of the agreements to completion of the project. 10 months for 10 to 15 million dollar projects. And IPD is responsive and flexible. So what does that mean? Again, the owner is participating in the team. So the owner is there if there are questions that come up. The owner is right there to answer those questions. The architect and the contractor are there to answer questions, to respond to each other. There's no 14, week, 14 days to respond to an RFI. When you're talking about very complex projects, technologies like hospitals, for example, where the technology actually changes in the course of the construction process, again, you have this interaction between all of the teams so they can be responsive, they can work on the fly to make the changes in the design to fit the new technology as it comes in. And of course, sustainability. So I'll talk more about how IPD facilitates sustainability, but just to touch on it briefly, what is sustainability? What are we talking about? We're talking about people, planet, profit. It's the triple bottom line notion. And IPD facil facilitates this when you think about the environmental and economic and social considerations. When you think about the environmental considerations, we, we saw that slide of 37% of <coughs> materials that are brought onto a construction site are wasted. Well, when you, in an IPD project, what you can do is you have a team 
that works together to design the project, often using, te using technology, so building information modeling, for example. <laughs> and what you do is you design a feature in the model, and then you send it straight to fabrication. They build it in the factory. You don't have cutting on site. So none of the waste that would come from having to cut on site and throw away is involved. So let's talk about the economic considerations. Again, cost. We ta I talked briefly about contingency. But the idea is that the contingency is for the project success. Everyone on the team is incentivized to build a project as efficiently and cost effectively as possible because the cost savings comes back to the team members. So the owner will get a percentage of the cost saving. And the architect and contractor and subs, to the extent that they're involved, also get a percentage of the cost savings. So the project, everybody's incentivized to bring this project in more efficiently, more economically. And let's talk about the social elements of IPD. One of the things about IPD is that you have key involvement of, involvement of key participants very early on. And what that means is that the key participants are involved in the decision making. They're involved in the design of the project. They're involved in terms of de determining the budget and the schedule. So they actually have an investment in the success of the project. So there's a social, personal involvement and investment. So there again, it goes back to this triple bottom line. Not just looking at cost, not just looking at the environment, but also looking at people. And the thing about sustainability is that it's changed over time. This is what green buildings used to look like. These are earth ships in Taos, New Mexico. Amazing places. I actually spent, on, there are some of them that are hotels, and we spent, on, spent the night there once. Beautiful, but not necessarily sophisticated, not necessarily scalable. This is what green buildings are now. These are more images from the Autodesk Briefing Center in Waltham, Massachusetts. These are building information model renderings of the ceiling structure that they created, which is a wooden ceiling structure, first done just in design, and then another actually 3D BIM rendering of what that ceiling looks like. All of this was done via computer technology. And sustainably in that, it was the, the, the ceiling was fabricated directly from the BIM model. There was no waste. It was all done on, on, at the factory and then just installed when it, when, when it was ready. So we are thinking about sustainability because of the business case. But we also have to think about sustainability because it's now being mandated. There are incentives, but also mandates to build sustainably. The purpose of this slide, really more than anything else, is to look at what is effectively an energy label for buildings, a food label. With AB 1103, commercial buildings are now required to post their Energy Star ratings. So you ha you, the public knows how energy efficient or inefficient your building is. They can go, they can shop from building to building to building. So even if you didn't want to build sustainably, if you don't build, build sustainably, you'll actually be at a disadvantage as compared to other buildings in the market. Building codes are moving to, in a more sustainable direction. There's the California Green Building Standard, Cal Green. ASHRAE is moving to more sustainable standards, both in terms of pure energy standards, but also incorporating energy, water efficiency, indoor air quality, et cetera. So we have the business case for building sustainably. We have the legal case for building sustainably. <coughs> but how do you build sustainably? And this goes back to the notion that IPD is the best way to do it. A green building is an energy efficient building, a high performance building, ultimately an integrated building. The idea that your designers, your contractors are not working in silos. They're talking with each other. And with, through these discussions, through these communications, they can actually achieve higher and higher levels of sustainability. And don't just take my word for it. ASHRAE, CURT, which is an owner's organization, the AIA, the DOA, all have determined that in order to, to achieve these higher levels of sustainability, you need to have project teams working together. And the thing about integrated project delivery is that it's all about the, t the individual participants not working as individuals, but working as a team with the goal of the building in mind. So the, goal, uh, the goals of sustainability are an element to success of the project. The goals of environmental efficiency, the goals of economic efficiency are all fundamental goals in terms of the success of the project. So a green building is an integrated building. And how do you build an integrated building without an integrated project delivery method?